There are fewer and fewer rivers that are actually being monitored. One of our colleagues at the U.S. Geological Survey looks at this book as sort of an end member. Our database now is probably as good as anyone's going to get for the next 50 years. We don't really talk about how a natural river works. What we're interested in is how does the material get into the river, how does it get flushed out into the ocean, and what happens after that. So we're looking at it more from the perspective of oceanographers. Uh, but the problem that a lot of oceanographers have had, and I must admit I was in that category also, is that we imagined that every individual river was a big black box. And we weren't particularly interested in what happened upstream of the river. We were just interested in how this material actually a a actually reached an estuary. The material that's coming out with the river water, whether it's sediment or dissolved material, is forming strata on the continental shelf. Um, from a sort of environmental perspective, it uh, is carrying pollutants and toxins with them. Many of those things attach themselves chemically to uh, the fine grain sediments that are coming out. The damming of the Mississippi and the increased use of fer fertilizers in places like, um, like um, Indiana and Iowa have increased the nutrient loads such that offshore of the Mississippi now, you have areas that essentially go anoxic. The history of our land is preserved in the ocean. So when we cut down trees, we cause more sediment to erode, which goes down the river and gets deposited in the ocean. And we can go out and look in the ocean um, at how much sediment is accumulating during different time periods. And we can study how changes natural as well as changes because of humans have been happening on the land out in that oceanic record. Humans, whether they mean to or not, when they try to end it, engineer a river, invariably get it wrong. And that could be the construction of a dam, it could be de deforestation, it could be agriculture, it could be the construction of a highway, it could be urbanization. You can go on and on with a very long list. We always get it wrong. One of the, the great trips we went for data collecting is we actually uh, went to Papua New Guinea and many of the rivers have crocodiles in them. And so we would <laughs> arrive at a river and um, ask the locals if they were crocodiles and the kids always said yes. <laughs> yeah. And so John was always nice enough to brave the waters and he would wade out into the river to collect our water sample while Megan and I stayed out of the water. <laughs> but we never once saw a crocodile. We think the kids were just kidding the whole time. Yeah, we, we probably, between Katie and myself, we probably sampled, I don't know, 20 rivers. What we've done more than that is to sample the data that other people have yeah. collected. I don't think there's a reason to be <clears throat> pessimistic. I mean, we're an adaptive species and uh, we will figure out how to adapt. I am not optimistic. We're making dirty our nest. We have to get a huge wake-up call, and I don't see it happening yet.